Well, hey, everybody. Happy day to you all, and welcome to this hour of the Fall Projection Summit by Projector Reviews. As you may have heard, my name is Scott Wilkinson. You may know me from such websites as AVS Forum and Home Theater, and I've been a journalist for the last 30 years, and these days I'm freelancing. And among the websites you will find me on right here, Projector Reviews, and I'm very happy to be doing that. And I'm happy to be hosting this hour of the Fall Projector Summit, where I will be speaking with Keith Robinson of LG. Keith, thanks so much for being here. Absolutely, Scott. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to a fantastic 45 minutes. You bet. You bet. It's going to be great. Now, I, I expect that most of this projector summit is probably going to be involved with, has been and will be involved with consumer products, but that's not our focus for this hour. We're going to be talking about business projectors or what we might call commercial projectors or B2B, business to business um, projectors that would be used in, not in a home theater, but in different settings. So why don't you start by uh, telling us something about the difference between the consumer products that LG obviously sells and the commercial or business projectors? Yeah, Scott, absolutely. And, and there is a pretty substantial difference. You know, I think that you know, when you realize in professional life, and it really doesn't matter what career you're in, you know, what technology or not technology, professional products are typically different than consumer products. Um, and so it's it's the same way with LG. So not only our flat panels, but our projectors, when you have a consumer product, it's basically built around a price point, uh, built about having some feature sets that a typical user, a light user would, would want to have. And when I say light user, you know, typically I think in a consumer environment, most people may spend an hour to maybe eight hours a day <laughs> on your TV or on your projector. But yeah. when you're in the commercial environment, you can go 24 seven. Mm -hmm. uh, even um, nowadays, especially with uh, everybody doing webinars, and everything, your monitors that you're using are going from in the morning until the evening. And most of the time, a lot of us don't even turn them off. And so they stay on all the time. But yeah. from the manufacturing, from the manufacturing standpoint, you know, we clearly, um, when it comes to the consumer models, uh, you may have a model number. Um, but the reality of it is there may be several different revisions in that model number. Mm -hmm. And parts may come from China, Singapore, Korea, Mexico, or wherever, but it's the same basic part number. And because for the consumer, it, it really doesn't matter. They take it home, unbox it, they put it in their living room, in their media room, their office, the kids' room, wherever, out by the pool, um, and you forget about it. But in the work environment, uh, in order to, because it's, it is much more of a heavy use environment, uh, anytime we make a change in products, we'll change a model number. So even if it's, you know, some of the internal components, we make a change. That way we can track, you know, how the failure rate is or anything that's happening with that, mm. that product. Mm. When, when, you're, when you're a consumer person, you know, if your TV goes out, oh, man, you know, I, now I can't watch the game, dadgummit. I know, but if I you're know. in a work environment, <laughs> but in you're a work losing, environment, that money. means money. Yeah, you're losing money. You're yes, um, you know, and and time is money. Mm -hmm. So, but the other thing that's really a difference is the quality and the um, level of manufacturing manufactured product that we put into commercial products. Uh, in our TV products, uh, we do conformal coating on the motherboard and all all the components. And what that really means, it, it's a a layer, a chemical layer. You know, and to make it simple, I'll just say like a shellac over all of the components. And so if you're in California or if you're in Florida or Anchorage, Alaska, or, uh, you know, the North Pole, South Pole, whatever, um, harsh environments, it won't really matter. So it can be very, very cold, very hot, very dusty. Um, you know, the U.S. military uses a lot of our products because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be over in the desert 
Um, there could be at the, you know, anywhere. <clears throat> but uh, the real difference is the performance level of the components. And, and when I say you could be in any profession, you know, I guarantee you, you may have a super fast, super B that you've fixed up and it's absolutely beautiful. But if you take it out to NASCAR or the drag strip against professional products, you're going to have a problem. Mm. So there is a definite difference. Uh, I don't so know that, a, if that explains of, it. In terms, in terms of build quality, uh, in terms of uh, fault tolerance and abuse tolerance, I guess we might say, they're, they're, the business products are probably built to withstand more of that than the consumer products. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and yet there are some some similarities as well, uh, which Phil noted a little earlier that, um, you know, you're still using the same technologies. You're using uh, the, a similar light uh, source, illumination source, uh, imaging panels, uh, so on like that. So there, I, I think, wouldn't it be fair to say there are some similarities as well? No, yeah, absolutely. And and actually, some of the products um, that we do put into the commercial environment, uh, we will identify and, and let you know that it's the exact same product that's in the consumer market. And we do have some crossover products. Mm -hmm. um, but from the commercial side, we do give it a commercial warranty. So uh, even though it's really designed, right there, yeah. it's um, you know, so b because the reality of it is, um, you know, we still want to support our corporate customers and our dealers. Uh, and so if you do buy a, a really a consumer product that we sell, it's still we still back it by all of, all of our warnings and service and support and hot swaps and advanced replacement on site service, all those things that you get from a business environment. You also get as a consumer. If you. If you buy a commercial product in a consumer environment, is that uh, what you're asking? I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I wasn't sure whether, um, whether you offered the same same type of warranty and service and hot swapping and so on on consumer products. If you if you buy the consumer product, which is our, we'll have a different, a little bit different model number, model number even yeah. though it may be the same product. And we'll go over an, one of those exact products today in the projector lineup sure. because we do have that crossover where the consumer product and the commercial product are the exact same product except mm -hmm. for one thing. Two things, actually. One is the part number is a little different, and the other is the warranty is different. Okay. All right. I got it. So in a business environment, how do you determine if you need a projector? versus a large monitor or a video wall or even a micro LED uh, wall, which would be very, very expensive. Uh, but but what, what goes into making that decision? So, you know, um, there's a lot of things that you look at when you're trying to determine that. Uh, you know, number one is the size that you're wanting to do. Mm -hmm. And so if you're trying to do something that is, you know, probably, 85 inches or below, mm -hmm. you can probably be better suited buying a flat panel. Uh, you can buy an 86 inch flat panel for less that you, than you can buy one of our 4K projectors. And all of our flat panels are 4K as well, so you're still getting the 4K. But I think, you know, um, when you're looking at a projector, you actually have flexibility. So today you determine that in this conference room, this meeting room, huddle space, uh, you know, whatever, theater space, um, church venue, that you may want today 86 inches and it's fine, but then you decide to move or um, now the room's expanded and you want to go up to 100 inches or 120 inches, that flat panel is not going to be expanding. Or the projector, you just move it back a little bit. The further you move it back, the larger the image becomes. Another, another example think, that, we're well, seeing, that we're seeing right here on the screen uh, is, uh, you know, seeing an, an x-ray, for example. And, and in that case, you might want to see more detail, which means you want a bigger image. So it depends on the, the, the context of what it is you're looking at and what you need to see, right? It does. It does. It, it, um, it makes a big difference. But I think really 
the main the main difference number one is what's your ultimate size that you're trying to pick um, and obviously um, it's 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 cost of, more cost effective to have a projector when you're getting into that 85 inch 80 inch up to 120 inch mm -hmm. than it would be a flat panel or a video wall or a direct view LED right. and that's that's one of the things that LG or a reseller or a you know, professional can help you determine what's your criteria, what's your budget, what are you trying to accomplish, what does your room look like? Mm -hmm. um, and so that can make a big determination if you want to have a flat panel or a projector. But I think, you know, that's one of the great things that we can help anybody with because we do have a lot of different technologies. You know, you mentioned DirectView LED and we have a beautiful bundle that's 130 inches. Um, and the MSRP on 130 inch direct view LED is $90,000. MSRP on a 4K projector that can do 130 inches is $6,500. <laughs> um, but they do Just different a things. There's difference there. Yeah, exactly. So the, uh, you know, so the cost differential there is, is obvious. Um, and the flexibility, once again, even though, you know, with 130 inch direct view LED, you're you're spending ninety thousand dollars, and I suppose you could change the size because I, if I'm not mistaken, that direct view LED is tiled, right? Tile based, so you could add more tiles and make it bigger. That would also be a lot more expensive than just moving the projector back a few inches. <laughs> you you make it sound so simple, so I I I love that. You know that um, <laughs> yes, you in theory could, um, but and unfortunately. Um, but anyway, you know, with the projector, though, and I, and I tell you, um, with with a 4K projector with 5,000 lumens that we have, um, and, it, and it comes in a couple of different flavors that we'll talk about, mm -hmm. but um, it is really, really hard to um, for a flat panel to beat this projector out in many environments. And, and I, you know, conference rooms, or a lot of conference rooms will have both. It is very, it's very common for me to go into a corporate account uh, large meeting rooms that they may have four or five hundred conference rooms in a high rise building, mm -hmm. and you know we move from one meeting room to the next, depending on who what VP we're meeting with, and there will be a drop down screen, projector comes on, or if there's maybe a few of us and we're at the front of the room, the TV comes on and we huddle around that. Mm -hmm. But I think you know today too with social distancing, um, being able to move back in a room. You know, we've all gone to in a room where there's a huge conference room and it can fit 50, 60 people and there's a dozen people. And we all huddle together. Well, mm -hmm. now we're not going to be doing that. We're not going to be doing spreading that out. for a while. So, yeah, having right. a <laughs> so having a projector could be a benefit as well. Yeah, you bet. Um, what about 4K? I mean, that seems to be kind of the standard these days. Is, is there any particular benefit? Can you even get 1080p anymore? I guess is really the question. So, uh, you know, when, when you look at flat panels, you really can't. I mean, there's a few models that we make that are that are digital signage. And when I say a few models, they're really the ones that you see when you walk up to McDonald's and you're going to order a Burger King. And those are still 1080p. Uh, but they're a specialty product. Yeah. But in the flat panels, everything is 4K now. Uh, in the projector world, believe it or not, 4K is just now emerging. So there is there has been a, some 4K products, but they've really been the kind of smaller, um, you know, lightweight, um, two or three hour a day type usage products. Uh, but right now, you know, 2020. I've seen a lot of companies announcing really true, solid built professional 4K uh, projectors, uh, and LG is one of them. And, and there are several major manufacturers that have done that as well. But you know, when you look at the 1080p, and that's still really popular um, in the projector world. Um, education, you know, they'll use WUXGA is very, very popular. It's it's you know, without pulling up a report or, you know, looking at some of that, um, right off the top of my head, I would say that probably 4K, maybe 5, 10% of the business at really? best right oh. now. Oh. 
Most of it is uh, this but, WXGA, which we should say, or a lot of it is, uh, which we should say is 1920 by 1200, right? It's a little bit more resolution vertically than 1080p. Yeah, it matches up with your computer products. Ah, okay. You know, versus your, you know, so versus really that's what it's designed to do. Yeah, Blu-ray or whatever, yeah. So you know, but you know, when you're when you're looking at the 4K 3840 by 2160, uh, you know, 1080p gives you two million pixels, a little over two million pixels that you're able to see on the screen, mm. uh, which looks fantastic. Uh, it still is a beautiful picture. But when yeah. you go up to 4K, now you're getting over eight million pixels, and so your attention to detail is completely different. And and it. And, and with our, the product that you're showing, um, with 4K and the WUXGA, but, uh, you know, they both can, can work as a home theater or as a business unit. So, so there's dual standpoints. This is an, exa this is an example of what you were talking about earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I've used, um, I've used the, as a test when I, when we first came out with the projector, I set it up in my media room and up there I had a 15, I have a 1500 lumen. Mm -hmm. projector right now is 1080p when i put in the 4k lg at 5000 lumens mm -hmm. at that that room it was amazing how beautiful it looked uh and, and it's a great value um from that standpoint as well so there's a crossover yes you can take a commercial 4k and put it in a consumer environment yeah. and it looks absolutely beautiful um and it still comes with the commercial warranty so you asked earlier um, you know, if you, any of us buy an LG commercial product, we still get the LG commercial warranty with it. Yeah. So yeah. that's just part of it. You know, yeah. I, and so if my LG screen that, that I'm looking at goes down, I can call LG and a guy will show up. They'll schedule <laughs> and come out to my house and fix it right on site. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, we're actually, we're and, actually and doing that, a review of that unit. We're actually doing a review, a review excellent. of the... 50 and that's what I did. I actually took it out of the box and I stuck it in my theater. I was like, wow, you know, 4K. The know what made it to me. Um, the th things that make it in, in a good, simple install um, that helps you install in an office room or a conference room makes it kind of nice to install in a home theater. Yeah, same, yeah. Vertical and horizontal lens shift. <laughs> Thank you. And when I saw, when I saw, wait a minute, this is a 4K, 5,000 lumen laser projector, compact with vertical and horizontal lens shift, I was very intrigued. So of well, course I took it out of the box before I sent it to my friend Scott. Um, my friend Scott Warner is actually doing a review on it, but mm -hmm. I was amazed that it was a it made a great picture, like you said. Well, and and five thousand lumens is quite a bit more than many consumer oriented E four K projectors. They're more like in the three thousand lumen range. So you need m more brightness in a cor in a corporate boardroom, certainly. But if you put that in your home theater. Uh, it's going to be much more effective uh, with HDR, for example. I, I, I guess does this does this uh, respond to HDR and represent HDR? Yes, th this product has full HDR capabilities. It has wireless capabilities, Bluetooth wireless capabilities. Um, you know, built-in Wi-Fi. Uh, so not many projectors. Uh, so think. So really, we all know smart TV. Yes. And we know what that means. Yep. You know, that means I could send right now my image right up to my TV from my phone, my iPad, my whatever, you know, bring your own device. Casting or mirroring, in other words. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. And so, yeah. you, know, you know, I think that that uh, really helps a lot, being able to do that. <clears throat> and, and with the web OS, uh, you know, we, we kept the same web OS that we do on our commercial and consumer TVs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, you, if, if you're having an LG product already, which a lot of us do, and we're one of the largest manufacturers in the world, so you're probably used to our web OS either in your hotel rooms or right. at home or at your work. And yep. so using that same web OS, it, it makes it easier for everybody to be able to immediately know how to use it. Right. Certainly having a consistent platform across all your display products makes a lot of sense and is, is a big, big advantage. Well, what about, uh, th though you have WebOS, uh, what about the, uh, what kind of apps do the business projectors have access to as compared to 
consumer? I mean, are, are you um, are you doing Android apps or, or are they specific to WebOS? So the two models that we were just showing, the, um, the actual true business models, mm -hmm. they do not have apps other than the mirror cast, the screen okay. sharing capabilities. You know, when you look at this picture and you're able to see uh, what, what we have on it, um, you know, you mentioned horizontal vertical lens shift and it's up to 20, up 20 degrees and 50, 20 degrees up and down, 50 degrees side by side. So it's huge. <clears throat> but that, the business projector also has HD base T, two HDMIs, and it has built in HD base T, which is also fabulous for uh, running, um, Conference rooms, you know, running a Cat5 to long right. distance and, and it makes right. it very economical. Very, very good, especially in a business environment where you, your source might be one end of, the, of a big conference room and the projectors at the other end or mm -hmm. whatever. But having, a, having yeah. a, the ability yeah. to drive a long cable, that's, that's really good. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, and, and, and a lot of times, um, you know, their companies are setting up adjacent conference rooms or joining conference rooms or even conference rooms or you know meeting spaces where they have the retractable wall and they want to they might need two or three projectors in that room and they want to sync them all up together mm -hmm. to be able to show you know so the audiences aren't some looking this way some looking this way right, everybody right, can right. kind of look ahead but um, you know the other 4k product that we have uh, which is our ultra short throw product. Oh well, yeah, I wanted to make sure. Um, and that's a, yeah. That is um, an actual consumer product. So um, we determined and decided that we wanted to also have that in our commercial lineup. And so we just made a, a little modification to the part number. Uh, but we didn't make any changes in the product whatsoever. Um, and, and in a short throw product, um, it, it's Follows a little bit different requirements than a standard throw projector. Uh, it, um, you know, obviously it would just set on a little credenza, uh, set it uh, very close to any wall. But that particular product, um, that one does have Netflix and a, the smart TV functions. Um, it's got all most of the consumer Variety things that you would have. Yeah. This strikes me very interesting in that it goes the other way. Whereas before we were talking about a business projector that one could buy and put in a consumer environment. Here's a consumer product that one could buy and put in a business environment. Yeah, we uh, will do that, for, you know, occasionally. Uh, you know, I think the big market for this uh, and something that we promote a lot is, you know, little conference rooms and you don't, you don't want to run cabling and all the wiring and put the projector up in the room. You don't want to hang a big TV. You know, you want to be able to set it on the credenza and project. Now, the, uh, the, the ones we were talking about earlier, the BU50 NST and the BF50 NST, I believe, uh, are, those are lamp-based illumination, am I correct? No, laser. Oh, those are everything laser. that we have are laser. Excellent. So, talk talk to us a little bit about la the laser illumination here, because this to me is yeah. one of the most important things about project new projectors these days is getting rid of those dang lamps. You know, it um, you know having lamp free is is very important, and it's a convenience too. Uh, that way, you don't have to worry about the lamp going out, and and the lamps dim over time much quicker. Uh, yeah. And you know, you've got to clean them. The lamps have, will require a filter, and the filter has to be cleaned, or you know the projector can overheat. Lamps get very hot, um, and you have to have the fans, and so the fans can be very loud. But you know, using the uh, DLP chip, the TI DLP chip, and having that driven by a laser uh, is really gives you the best of both worlds. Uh, the, the laser has longevity; it's very affordable. It has uh, you know a beautiful look to it so i you know I, I think that over time most manufacturers will um at least for the you know the really heavy commercial space will be getting out of the lamp projectors you know i know for you know k through 12 you know they they still want the 400 dollar projector and sure uh, you know they, they may not really be able to to go up to the larger ones but the the life expectancy is twenty thousand hours without having to really touch it makes a big difference. And I think that makes a big difference in consumer as well. We'll I'll just mention that because, you know, it, it, lamps are expensive, and that's true in the business world as well. You know, having to replace a lamp every year or so, or two. You know, I mean, this 
this saves a lot of money on on lamps and on maintenance. So it's it's a it's a win win all around. <laughs> I think. Well, yeah, and plus you don't have to worry about the the um, the manufacturer discontinuing the model and oh, I'm yeah, sorry, we yeah, no right. longer make a lamp for that product. Right, 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 right. You know, I mean, it happens, yeah. but. Um, Am I correct that? Uh, I think I read somewhere that one one of these products uh, actually has a three channel laser. That's brand. That's pretty new. Most laser projectors, at least inexpensive ones, uh, you know, have a blue laser with a yellow phosphor wheel, and that creates white light. What you're saying here is that you've actually got separate red blue lasers, which are normally in very expensive products. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Very good point. And Scott, we can't forget that those people who are sensitive to rainbows, the mm. rainbow is because of the wheel spinning. It helps eliminate a lot of that. So anybody who's used a consumer one has noticed that for a DOP-based product, they, they see less rainbowing. Yes, exactly. Although I would think if, if this is a, these are single chip DLP. Am I correct, uh, Keith? Yes. So you're, you're cycling the lasers, the reds on, then the green, then the blue, and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, so you might still see some rainbows, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a lot less uh, because that cycle is probably happening faster than a color wheel would cycle the colors. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. But, you know, anything's on, everything is on the web to research some of these things and see some of the advantages and benefits of, mm -hmm. you know, what the different technologies are. And, and so I think that um, I would certainly encourage anybody to look at some of our specs of our uh, both, you know, our consumer product that we sell for the ultra short throw, um, but then also our WXDA and, and 4K products, which is the same chassis, same components, uh, just a different resolution. Mm -hmm. What kind of prices are we talking about with, with respect to the to the projectors we've been talking about today? Yeah, so um, the ultra short throw 4K uh, MSRP on that is $64.99. And then the WUXGA, and I want to double check here because I want to make sure I'm giving the right information. The WUXGA retails for $34.99. Uh -huh. And then the 4K 5000 limit is $44.99 is MSRP. Uh -huh. Now, does the uh, ultra short throw, the HU85LS, uh, does that come with a screen or does it have an option to come with a screen or does the user need to provide their own? Yeah, we do not we do not sell any mounts or screens, uh, any third party products. Uh, you know, so no, we do we do not. Mm -hmm. No, there are plenty of them available. It's just that some UST oh, yeah. projectors, you know, can, are sold with a screen. But in a business right. setting, I would see I I would see maybe less of that. I would expect, I suppose, less of that. So um, that makes total sense. So <clears> the <throat> ultra short throw around sixty five hundred. And the uh, the other two in the thirty five forty five hundred dollar range, roughly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, and 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 depend. You know, the other thing too. Um, you know, when you talk about screens, you know, um, it depends upon your environment. There's different games of screens. There's different styles of screens correct. that correct. Another reason you know, mirror not. up with the projector. Yes. Another reason not to include one because your the environments are could be so different. You would want to match the screen to the environment. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, exactly right. Not to mention the size of the screen. What's what's the maximum size of screen of screen that's practical with these projectors? You know, I think that we really try to keep everything, you know, somewhere in the range of less than 160 inches diagonal. And it's really optimum range would be somewhere around 130, 110 to 130. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, although the 5,000 oh, one could could go larger. It could, um, but we do not have interchangeable lenses. And so, you know, as you go back, the image just gets a little bigger. The pixels get a little bigger and bigger. Um, where, you know, if you tried to get too big, you would technically probably want to have a projector. You could put a, a proper throw lens on it mm -hmm. um, and make that investment, you know, for that. Um, that that's a market that um, we right now are are not really looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're trying to go with um, you know with the portable classification of product. You know, um, 
So not the big 80 pounders and, and things <laughs> like that. So the stadium projector. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, um, you know, the huge sports bars or, you know, the, the, right. the church auditoriums or, you right. know, you know, things like that. Right. Right. Well, um, I wonder if we have any questions, Phil. Uh, you're, you're, I think you're looking at the question. My friend Gary wants to verify that, like I said, the three-channel laser is what's in the ultra short throw. The BU and the BF50 NXTs use a traditional blue laser with, with phosphor yellow phosphor. wheel. Mm -hmm. Phosphor wheel. The uh, the three laser two also has a habit of increasing its overall color gamut because you're not using one wheel to do all the colors by having a independent red, green, and blue. Most of the time, you end up with a wider color gamut, and it really helps with its color. Particularly because lasers are monochromatic, so you're you're extending that color gamut out to the edges of the CIE diagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to go back sure. to a couple of things. Uh, I can see why this ultra short throw is being utilized as commercial and consumer. Because one of the big things you talked about, Keith, is reliability for long duty cycles. Because mm -hmm. you may watch it at home for two or three hours, but in a business environment, that unit is on from nine in the morning till five in the e till five in the evening. And mm -hmm. having a laser mm -hmm. means that that it's fine. You're talking years and years and years worth of life. And then guy comes into a conference room or it used to be a, an executive office and now it's a conference room and IT tells you it's going to cost the, um, thousands of dollars to, to run a wire and hang a projector in that room versus putting one of these on a stand. I could totally see why there's a, um, an application for that as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so I can see how these things are already going. Oh, a couple of things we didn't talk about, Gary. The um, because this is a consumer piece, the the ultra short throw, it has all of the thin IQ um, stuff that's in the in the LG TVs. So all of the brains, um, you have your you have your voice control and the remote control. So all of those things. Right now, maybe a business guy isn't picking up the remote, except for maybe at, at the break time to see who won the football game. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but those capabilities are there and having those apps you never know when that you may start seeing more and more business apps being developed as more and more of these smart projectors start showing up so mm -hmm. they may start taking advantage of these apps along the way but even in a business environment you may want to check out your youtube video or go or go to a website to check something out and and having it all built into the projector i can see pretty being being a um a useful thing Another thing we didn't another thing we didn't mention was in the ultra short throw. Am I correct that there's a some sort of sound system built into it? Yes, that's another thing. What there is in all of them is the ability to do Bluetooth speakers wirelessly. Ah, um, but I, you know, in, in that small in in that small little projector, and I'm you know I'm looking to see because it only has you know maybe five watt two five watt speakers or something like that sure. so, but the ability to connect yeah. wirelessly and and that's a big and that's a big point because you want to you can get the signal up to it and you get the sound from it so right. so that is actually a good thing too um on the on the camera on the on that other the ultra short throw it also has e-arc so if you want to do something for the um if you are decide you do want to play youtube or check your commercial on net on a on Am on amazon or whatever um, you can send that back to a sound system. It has all the tricks you would, I mean, some of this stuff you may never need in a conference room, but let's be honest, a lot of times there's flat panels in the conference room and they're using some of the con consumer features in, mm -hmm. in, those, in, those, in those units as well. Yep, I agree. You know, another thing too that we're seeing a market for, um, and, and it may not be um, as in much in the commercial, but uh, you know, we're seeing because of the ultra short throw being a 4K and as bright as it is, <clears throat> Excuse me, um, and it also has um, true motion, so it can be excellent for gaming. So video gaming, esports is becoming very popular, um, and a lot of colleges that I meet with are, are talking about esports, you know, and even some of the education. But um, it's you know, esports are um, an up and coming item, and having true motion video on a 4K projector that you can carry around. Is a big advantage. I, I, you know, I could totally see um, you you picking that up and taking it over to your neighbor's house, 
putting it on a wall and the kids, you know, do their esports. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I, again, that's probably not something that's going to happen in a business environment, at least not during business hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's funny. Well, so Gary is asking you, about, I'm sorry, Gary uh, was asking about the replacement, the replacement laser for the UL85 LS. By the time you need a replacement laser, you can go pick it up in your flying car. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> so, so, so that is one of the main benefits of this is um, it's a um, it's the long term longevity of it. It's the mm -hmm. pictures consistent. It lasts a long time. You put it in the conference room because we're actually building. I'll let you know we're actually building a um a new uh, building for my other my day job and we're looking at putting laser projectors everywhere because the IT department just gets you know I'm the it looks dark the projector looks dark because every two you know because uh, I gotta they, go replace you know, that bulb again I, let me take it down and pull change the bulb and I can't find the bulb and don't put your <laughs> fingers on it because it'll explode you know all that type of stuff right? <laughs> I, I teach people don't want to deal with them. I mean, I mean that alone yeah. um, that is alone. something that, yeah, the, the labor hours of not having to deal with that type of stuff and knowing you can hang in a room and, and it's going to be good for years and years and years makes it a lot of these things, whether it's an ultra short throw or even the, um, the, the other, the 50, a great piece. Cause that 50, like I said, that horizontal and vertical lens shift is a big deal because a, a really lot of these, deal. a lot of DOPs, don't have that <laughs> okay yep. so now yep. you're starting to mess with um vertical and hor digital keystoning and everything else which oh, you're man. buying 4k resolution and you give it all back to try to fit it on on, yeah, yeah, really. on your you know, on your on your screen every projector i've ever reviewed if it didn't have vertical and horizontal lens shift i nicked it for that mm -hmm. i mean oh yeah. oh yeah except possibly in the very lowest price categories you know you kind of go well okay but and, but i really praised any projector in the lower price categories that had it because it's so important yeah because you have to look at retrofitting too right keith guy has guys pulling down an old yeah. one putting up a new one this one's a little uh, um so if you don't have a decent amount of zoom and a decent amount of vertical and horizontal lens shift you may have to move your screen That's and right. You know, so so if you're trying to if you're looking for a retrofit type application or a device to use in retrofitting, that's kind of almost that's worth the premium alone. Laser means I don't have to replace it ever again, you know, and not while I'm there. Maybe when I retire, the poor sucker after I that takes my job <laughs> after has to do it. You know, I know that I can get it to align to the screen I already have. Yep. You know, those two things are actually kind of big things. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Yep. Yep. They really are. <clears throat> and the uh, you know and the commercial I you know, the 50 B B uh, NFT products they have 12 point uh, warping for um, adjusting the screen squareness the consumer the 50 I mean excuse me the um, ultra short throw that does have digital key keystoning so versus actually being able to come in and move the different points on the screen in my mind I see that when it comes to video. Whatever you're trying to do, visual from LG, we have everything that you would need. If you needed, you know, from a video wall that we just put um, 300 square feet at MGM or Caesars in, in Las Vegas or in football stadium, or if you need a small desktop monitor, uh, we have those. Uh, right now, I'm looking at a 43-inch curved LG screen for my for my desktop. So we have everything, desktop monitors, we have Graham computers, um, sh projectors, flat panels, video walls, direct view LED, transparent uh, direct view LED, OLED, curvable OLED. I don't even know um, how, much, how, many, how much possibility that you could come up with that LG could fit something into that environment. Um, exactly. And so I think that it, it really gives you a lot of flexibility. But I love this projector. Um, I, you know, I'm a huge advocate, advocate of them, um, and uh, I was very, very impressed when I looked at it. I was, I was kind of skeptical um, when I first, you know, started looking at it, you know, because for years, you know, we've really been mainly in the flat panel business, 
Uh, and then when I got my sample uh, from Korea and I started using it, I had to tell the whole world about it. I was telling all my coworkers and calling all my customers, oh my gosh, you got to see this thing. You know, I had back-to-back -back universities that I, I took it to and uh, everybody loved it. It's, um, I, uh, you can't go wrong with it. I will tell you this too. It's kind of funny, like just like the consumer ultra short throw went to the professional side. When I was looking at the consumer one, the professional version, the BU50 NXT, I was like, man, they should sell this on the consumer site. And now there's a consumer version. So now that projector, they said, wow, lens shifting and better zoom. And you know what? That'll work in this application. So you can actually see the, the consumer guys taking professional stuff and the professional guys taking consumer stuff because a lot of the benefits go across um, both um, both things. Absolutely. It's great, great crossover. Right. LG is, is well positioned to take care of both uh, of both uh, markets easily, as we can see. Um, you know what? It's it's time for us to say thank you to Keith Robinson from LG for uh, showing us uh, and, and explaining to us the the new business projectors and how they cross over, as we've been talking about. So so thank you, Keith, for coming. Um, yeah, thank you, thank Scott. You. Thanks a lot, Keith. Yeah.